Stayallday.com. The success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved, and on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative that is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques all underneath the umbrella of one unified philosophy that is called work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is how to change. This is the part, this is part one of what is going to be a four-part series on how to change. And before we get into this, I remind you all of two things. First of all, my daily motivation and Monday motivation messages guaranteed to have you focused, sharp, and on point to start your day or your week respectively. All you got to do to get these is be a member of my texting community. It is free to join. Just text me at this number, 305-384-6894. And once we start sending those messages out again you'll be getting those straight to your phone again that is the numbers down below in the description so you can get my daily motivation monday motivation messages secondly work on your game university all right this is the place where i do all of my coaching you like to have me as your direct coach you would like to be able to ask me questions and get direct answers from me you want to have me uh, work walking you through our four pillars of mindset strategy systems and accountability when it comes to building up your business and building yourself up personally Become a member of Work On Your Game University. All you got to do is go to workonyourgameuniversity.com. That link is down below in the description to uh, wherever you are consuming this. And with that out of the way, let's get into this topic here today, which is, <clears throat> again, how to change. Definition of change is to make someone or something different to alter or to modify. Being at this show is both personal and professional development. I know that people who listen to it are looking to change in positive ways, and you're looking to do so on a consistent basis. So in today's episodes, and again, over this four part mini series, I'm going to explain to you exactly what needs to happen in order for that change to occur. And I'm going through making sure that we do actually have a four part series. Yes, four part series. So I'm going to tell you what exactly needs to happen in order for and what needs to be in place rather for you to make that change. And I think all of you want to change again in a positive way. So change doesn't have to be something is going bad. It just means you want to do better and you want to move forward, which you should look to do because the world is always changing. And if the world's changing and you're not, that means you're getting caught in a standstill in neutral while the world's moving forward, which means by definition, you lose. So let's get into it. Point number one, topic once again is how to change. First thing is understanding that your challenge is not in what to do. This is one of the biggest mistakes people make when they're trying to make any type of change, whether you're trying to make something better, uh, stop something, start something, uh, figure something out, get something completed, just get a thing done. Most people get bogged down in this thought of and this challenge with what do I do? And when they don't know what to do, people use that as the reason why they're not making the change or they can't take the next step or they think the only thing they need is for someone to tell them what to do. This is where many people get crossed up when it comes to change. And it's not that you don't need to know what to do. You do need to know what to do, but you can't get crossed up focused on what do I need to do? First thing you need to think about is the first thing most people think about is what they need to do. But the actual change needs to come from who you are being as a person. And the change in actions will result from the change in self-image. First thing you should ask yourself is not what do I need to do, but who do I need to be as a person? And once you change your self-image, i.e. who you need to be as a person, then the actions will flow naturally from that change in self-image. The change in energy, the change in approach, and the change in mentality. This is how change actually occurs. But since most people never ask this question, this is the reason why many people fail to make the changes that they desire to achieve. So in short, your first question is, who do I need to be? Not what do I need to do? Who do I need to be? That's the question you should ask. My book, The Mirror of Motivation, details how to ask yourself this question and it walks you through how to answer this question. But the answers are going to be supplied by you, not supplied by me. Go to mirrorofmotivation.com. You can get a free copy of that book. It's covered in shipping. The more clearly you can answer the question, who do I need to be? And you can ask yourself this question over and over and over again. The more clearly you are answering that question and then the more you are able to start, or you're already able, the more you choose to start assuming the posture, energy, mindset, and aura, excuse me, of the individual that uh, coincides with the answers that you give, the actions will again flow directly from being that person. The, the actions that are commensurate with that person will come naturally to you. This is the starting point of change. Starting point of change is not Asking yourself, what actions do I need to take? Now, of course, you will take action in order to make change. Can't make change just thinking about it. 
But the change in state and the change in energy and the change in being naturally leads to a change in behaviors. The challenge, again, is many people focus on the behaviors. So let me change my behaviors, then I'll change who I'm being. That is a backwards formula. You're doing it in the wrong order. So everyone here remembers being in school and taking algebra class, right? In algebra, you were taught that there was an order of operations. There were certain things you had to do first. You would deal with the exponents or you would deal with whatever is in the parentheses. Then you do the multiplication, the division. Then you could do the addition and the subtraction. If you did things in the wrong order, you would get the wrong answer. Even though the equation, the many equations within the equation that you dealt with, you got the right answer. But since you did it in the wrong order, you ended up getting the wrong answer. That's what happens when you do things out of order, when you have the wrong order of operations. So today I'm letting you know the first order of operation for making change is changing who you are being as a person, which does not require any activity except mental activity. Well, the only activity is mental. So it's not the physical, tangible, go uh, call somebody or send an email or lift the weight. That's not the type of activity that starts this. What starts this is your way of thinking. When that changes, then the actions will become uh, much more, they will much more easily come to you and they will much more easily flow through you. Point number two, today's topic once again is how to change number two, accept the reality of the law of inertia and its effect on you. The law of inertia states that an object in motion shall remain in motion and an object not in motion shall remain not in motion until or unless acted upon by an outside force. I detailed the law of inertia and how it works in episode number 2466. And the law of inertia matters and your understanding of it matters because most people's failure to change is not because they lack the intention for doing so. Any of you who is not changing in your life in any way right now is not because you don't want to change. If someone just stopped you on the street and say, hey, is there any aspect of yourself or your life or your career or your business that you would like to change? Almost everybody's answer is yes. I would like, for example, I would like to make more money. If you're making $150,000 a year and you want to earn Hundred, you want to earn five hundred thousand dollars a year. That is a change. All right, if you are uh, at fifteen percent body fat, but you would like to be at five percent body fat, that is a change. If you read one book a month, but you want to start reading two books a month, that's a change. If you have people around you who are kind of mediocre, but you want to be around some people who are high level, that's a change. We all have changes that we want to make in our lives. And again, the reason that most people don't change is not because they don't have these same desires that you have. They may not be. They may not be exactly the same, but they have desires same way that you had desires. The reason many people fail to bring their desires to fruition, in addition to what I talked about in yesterday's episode, which is failing to make a demand of it and make leaving it as an option, as a wish or a hope rather than being a demand, is because most people are not able to work against the inertia that has already set in on themselves and on their lives. In simpler terms, most people become a certain type of individual and never change from being that type of person for the rest of their lives. And this is the law of inertia in action. So many people are not familiar with the concept of inertia, but when you better understand the concepts, then you may better understand the challenges that you face. It's easier to deal with the challenge when you know there's a challenge coming. It's like it's easier to take a punch when you know somebody's about to punch you than if someone punches you by surprise, that one might knock you out, but it doesn't have to be a hard hit because you just didn't see it. And it's the same thing when it comes to the law of inertia. When you decide that you want to make a change in your life, keyword decide, and you want to make a change, understand the first thing you're going to face is resistance because you're trying to change something that has already been set by the law of inertia. Law of inertia has you moving in a certain direction or not moving at all based on what end of the spectrum you are in when it comes to inertia. And when you decide to make a change, you are the outside force that is trying to go against the inertia that has already set in. And depending on how long that inertia has been set, the harder that outside force, which is you, needs to be to initiate the change. So if you've been set a certain way for 30 minutes, you need a certain amount of change to overcome, certain amount of energy rather, to overcome that 30 minutes of inertia and initiate change. If you've been set for a certain way for 30 years, you need a significantly higher amount of energy to make the change that you need to make. And again, depending, and this is all depending on what type of change we're trying to make and what are you changing from and what are you changing to. But the law of inertia is a law, meaning it exists everywhere and there are no exceptions to it. So if you've been doing something a certain way for a certain amount of time, for you to change how you're doing it, it's going to take a significant amount of, again, outside force, i.e. energy and reasoning and resolve to move you in the other direction. It would help if you had some something or someone or maybe plural, some things or some ones outside of yourself to help you with this process. 
This is the reason why, again, the training, consulting, coaching, physical therapy, this is the reason why these industries exist, to help people make the change that may not be so easy to make. Because again, you've been a certain way for a while. You gotta get the, you gotta get the process back, get going the other way. It's like if you uh, hurt your leg, or say you break your leg, or say you're in a cast for six months, and when you finally get out of that cast, that leg that was in the cast is not really ready to walk or run the way that it used to because it's been sitting there not moving for six months. It has atrophied to the point that it is not usable. But this is the reason why physical therapy exists. So your physical therapist can help you learn how to walk again, get your body coordinated again, and you can start moving around the way you used to. But you have to retrain your body to do that. And what you're doing during that physical therapy is you are working against the inertia that set in during the six months that your leg was in the cast. You understand what I'm saying here? And it's the same thing when it comes to any other aspect of your life where let's say you haven't been getting the success that you want in a certain area. There's a certain inertia that sets in when you're not getting success, even when you're trying to go against it. But for whatever reason you haven't been able to, in order for you to change that situation and shift the momentum in the other direction, you need a certain amount of energy to go in the other direction. And hopefully if you have the right process, the right system, the right strategy and the right mindset, all of those things help to kind of gang up on the inertia and push it back in the direction in which you want it to go. All right. Many people don't change because, again, they are completely unaware of everything I just explained to you. So they can't change because they don't even know what they're going up against. And it's hard to beat an opponent that you can't see. And this is why change doesn't happen for a lot of people, except randomly and usually by luck. So even when people have the intention of changing, they don't create enough energy to push against the inertia that already exists. And I've already told you that most people, what I've already told you, one of the truths about human beings, people are lazy. So inertia already exists as a law. People are already lazy. And this is, you combine those two alone, this is the reason why people can't change. Because they can't push back strongly enough against what already exists. They just let it be. All right, I might as well just leave it here. I might as well just leave it as it is. Most people are too lazy to generate the energy to shift and reverse the effect of inertia on them. And this is the reason why many people stay the same. No one is stupid enough that they see a situation in their lives and they just say, well, I just want to leave it like that. Nobody, nobody says it. But people are lazy enough to allow it. No one is stupid enough to want a situation that they don't want, an unwanted situation to remain. Nobody's that dumb. Nobody says, well, this situation is not great, but you know what? I want it to stay that way. Nobody says that. Most people are just too lazy to do anything about it, so it appears that they're okay with it. Because what happens when you fail to make a change that you wanted to make, and you know in your heart of hearts, unconsciously, you understand that you're not willing to do the work to make the change, what happens is people end up rationalizing a situation. How many of you have some circumstances in your life right now that you have rationalized? In other words, you've made up a story that makes the situation okay, even though you know the situation is not okay. But you made, a, you made a story to make it seem okay because you're not willing to do the work to change it. So therefore, let me make up a story to make it sound fine so I can go to sleep at night. Because otherwise, you'd be going crazy. That's how it works. Let's move on to point number two. I mean, number three, excuse me. Today's topic, once again, is how to change. Point number three. Prepare yourself for the mental and emotional challenge of breaking old habits and implementing new ones. So I just gave you a good crash course on that in point number two. The mental and emotional challenge. Notice I didn't say physical challenge because this is much more mental and emotional. Physical, yeah, there may be a physical challenge depending on what you're doing. But most of your resistance is going to be mental and emotional. It's not going to be physical. Even if what you're doing is literally physical. You're trying to climb Mount Everest or run a marathon or lose 30 pounds. Even though it's a physical thing, the outcome is going to be physical. It's going to show physically your biggest challenge is mental and emotional. Trust me. No matter what you're doing. On the other side of breaking inertia, folks, is that you have to break old habits and say goodbye to some parts of your current self. In order to break the inertia of being a certain type of person, you have to say goodbye to some of your old habits. Habits are very difficult to break. Habits are a form of inertia. Habit is a certain momentum or stagnation, in two sides of the same coin, of the way you've been. And if you want to change or get rid of that habit, then you have to fight against something that has been set. It's been set for a long time, as long as you've had that habit. Some of you have had habits your entire lives, don't even realize that you had that habit. And when someone like me comes along and offers you to do something different. You hear it and you understand it. And intellectually, you get it, but you don't really want to do it because not because you don't want to, but because you start to realize what the cost is going to be to you mentally and emotionally to break this habit. Most people would rather just keep their habits and rationalize them than change the habits and deal with the discomfort. And again, I talk to people every single day, so I know what I'm talking about. 
as a general rule, I can say that this is true. Most people don't want to deal with the mental and emotional pain that comes from changing that comes with changing a habit or breaking inertia. Because it requires you, first of all, it's not going to be easy. I'll tell you that up front. And there will be discomfort involved. And again, this discomfort is not physical. Most people, when they think discomfort, you might think physical. Maybe that's just how I think. But the discomfort is going to be mental and emotional. Just the mindset, breaking the old mindsets and dealing with the emotional, the emotional discomfort, let's just say, of separating current you from past you. And past you could have been yesterday. I'm not talking 10 years ago. So this is you stepping outside of your comfort zone and doing it on purpose voluntarily, which is not easy. Most people don't step outside of their comfort zones on purpose. Some people do it by accident. Some people allow themselves to be pushed out of their comfort zone or they just get pushed. But most people don't do it voluntarily and definitely don't do it consistently. Remember that part I told you about people being lazy? Okay, this is the part that people want to avoid. The reason people are lazy is not because they want to avoid the physical pain. They want to avoid the emotional and mental pain. That's what people really want to avoid. The discomfort of changing their habits because we get emotionally connected to our habits it becomes part of who we are because the habits are programmed into the subconscious, which is where our ego also lives. So your habits and your ego get familiar with each other. This is the reason why it's hard to break habits because they're connected to your ego, even if the habit is not healthy. Even when you know the habit is destroying you. And this is the reason why drug addicts, uh, alcoholics, gamblers, uh, porn addicted people have trouble breaking their habits, even though they know intellectually that what they're doing is hurting them. They still, it's hard for them to break away from it. It's an interesting thing about human beings. So it is at this point when people have decided that they will deal with the discomfort that a lot of people will still at that point turn around and go back because the discomfort is a little bit too strong and the pull of the past is a little bit too, too tight. Once they realize how much discomfort we're actually talking about and they see what it's going to take, oh, now it's a different story. See, it sounds one way when you're thinking about doing the thing. It feels differently when you're actually doing it. Any of you who's ever made any significant changes in your life, you know what I'm talking about. When you're logically and intellectually thinking, okay, this is what I need to do. It sounds good. But then when you start to do it, you're like, oh, damn, this is more than I thought it was going to be. This is more overwhelming than I expected. So if you're serious about change, folks, understand that the discomfort is coming. It's like if you, get in a, if you play a, a combat sport and you get involved, eventually you're going to get hit in the face. Like there's, you can't avoid it. All right, so don't try to pretend that it's not coming. It's coming. And you just got to be ready to deal with it. And again, it's better, easier to take it when you know it's coming than if it hits you by surprise. All that said, let's recap today's class. This is part one of our what will be a four part series on how to change, which means to make something different, alter or modify. Point number one, understanding your challenge is not about what to do. Instead, you should be asking yourself, who do I need to be? It's a first of all, the answers to that question may be harder for you to come by, but this is the right order of operations. If you change who you're being and what you're doing will come naturally from that, it'll be much easier to take your next step. Number two. Accept the reality of the law of inertia and its effect on you. It has a strong pull on you, and that's why it's very difficult for people to make change. So when I say people are lazy, I'm not talking about physically. I'm really talking mentally and emotionally because the law of inertia is really pulling on you to stay the way that you have been or the way that you are. Number three, prepare yourself for the mental and emotional challenge of breaking old habits and implementing new ones. This is a, a big challenge that a lot of people have to deal with is just saying goodbye to their past self or their present self because every minute, the last minute was your past self. And saying goodbye to that person and stepping into a new space is difficult for, is more difficult for some than it is for others and also depends on what you're saying goodbye to. But this mental and emotional challenge will happen and applies to everybody. You cannot avoid it. You just need to be ready to deal with it. All that said, tomorrow we get into part two of the series. Make sure you text me so you're in my community. Also go to workonyourgameuniversity.com to get me as your direct coach. Have me working with you directly on your mindset, your strategy systems, and implementation process for how you can take your personal and professional life to its best version to be the best version of yourself, max out on your potential, and again, have me walking you hand, hand in hand through the process of making it happen. Again, that's work on your game, university.com. Work on your game. Dre, all.